third morning of my crazy road trip, I took off from a small motel in Cache Creek and set off for the Bella Coola Valley, which is located in the heart of the Great Bear Rainforest in the remote reaches of the coastal mountains of British Columbia. In spite of the fact that this is easily one of the most gorgeous spots in BC, I quickly got the impression that Bella Coola isn't a huge draw for tourists. This might be due to the fact that to reach Bella Coola, one has to first drive out to Williams Lake, which is already in the middle of nowhere, and then another five hours on a road that eventually turns to dirt, right before you arrive at a very sketchy mountain pass with steep inclines and multiple hairpin turns. But if you are willing to devote almost an entire day to get there and can stomach the sheer drops on either side of the sketchy dirt road on the way in, you will be rewarded by reaching a valley that is something of a cross between Yosemite, Hetch Hetchy, and the Austrian Alps. The town of Bella Coola was founded by Norwegian settlers in the late 19th century, and it is said that they fell in love with the valley immediately as the mountains reminded them of home. As you come off the mountain on Heckman Pass for the first time, you get the impression that this is a valley that is lost in time. Farms that are well over a hundred years old dot the valley floor under peaks that reach almost 10,000 feet in all directions. Between the massive mountains, the meandering Bella Coola River, the rainforest, and the wildlife, I knew I had made a good choice in choosing to stay at the Bella Coola Valley Campground for two nights on my way up to Alaska. Still about 40 kilometers from my campsite. I think about 60 from Bella Coola. Pulled over at this amazing, uh, appropriately named stupendous viewpoint. And uh, you got this. And then right behind me, you got this. Which is giant mountains all around. No smoke from fires. Mosquitoes, definitely. Whether you are hiking through the forest, climbing the nearby towering peaks looking for glaciers, taking a ferry out of the bay to explore a nearby island, or jumping in a kayak to look for bears on the Bella Coola River, you will find plenty of options in Bella Coola Valley. As I was anxious to test out the all-wheel drive, three-inch lift, and sumo springs on the new Sienna, I decided to head to Odegaard Falls, which was located about 24 kilometers up a fairly steep and rugged logging road. I was pleased to find that the van handled rocks and debris, steep inclines, and the mud without much of a problem. But I still felt uneasy crossing those tiny bridges across the Nusitsum River multiple times on my way up the pass. I was also worried about the cargo carrier on the back of the van, but fortunately, I only bashed the trailer hitch two or three times driving through some of the deeper ruts on the way up. After about an hour of testing out my suspension on an extremely bumpy road, I arrived at the falls. Odegaard Falls were indeed impressive. Though not as huge, they reminded me a bit of Yosemite Falls as they plummeted nearly a thousand feet with an upper and lower section. I felt it was definitely worth the bumpy ride up, but if you decide to visit these falls, please be sure to be driving a vehicle with adequate clearance. The clearance is more of an issue than having a four-wheel drive. On my way back, I passed a van which had a note on it stating that it had broken down or was waiting on a tow which was expected to take a day or two. I'm going to assume that the breakdown may have been due to a damaged oil or transmission pan. My Prius, which I left at home, would definitely not have made it up that road. So if you're thinking of heading up the Nusitsum Forest Service Road, just be aware that your vehicle will definitely need some clearance.
Needless to say, I had an amazing time in Bella Coola Valley and I can't wait to return again. Here's a quick look at just a few of the shots I took during my stay. Early on the morning of September 3rd, I packed up the Sienna and headed out of Bella Coola Valley. As I headed up the sketchy dirt road with the hairpin turns, I promised myself that I would return at some point in the future, hopefully with more time to explore. Even though the drive to Prince George doesn't seem like it should take that long, the hairpin turns and the washboard sections of the road definitely slow your progress and ultimately, the drive took me over eight hours. Fortunately, the dirt turns to pavement as soon as you head west on the Chilcotton Highway, but there are large stretches of this road that have no signal or gas stations, so it would be a good idea to fill up at the one gas station in Bella Coola before heading out, even though it looks like that pump was installed in the early 1960s. After a hot shower and a good night's rest in Prince George, it was time to head west on the Yellowhead Highway before heading north on the Stuart Cassiar towards Dease Lake. My main objective was to find a place to camp next to the south side of a lake, preferably one with a mountain on the other side, to provide a good setting for the Aurora Borealis. The KP index for September 4th was a 6, which seems to be unusual for this early in September. My chances for seeing the Aurora were pretty good and I was excited for the opportunity considering I was prepared to drive all the way above the Arctic Circle just to catch a glimpse. But on this night, the Aurora was supposed to dip south, possibly all the way down to the Washington border. Deese Lake seemed like a good bet and I set off hoping that the storm would break in time for me to get a good view. As I headed north on the Stuart Cassiar, the topography began to change and the trees were becoming smaller due to the limited sunlight in the winter. After 12 hours of driving, I knew I wouldn't make it all the way to Deese Lake by sunset. As I was still several kilometers from my campsite, the sky began to light up. Realizing I would never make it to Deese Lake in time to shoot the sunset, I noticed the lake with a stunning reflection off to the right. I slammed on the brakes, pulled off the road, and began to shoot. I eventually drove down to Deese Lake looking for a good angle for the Aurora, but I ended up coming back to Nat Lake instead, which had mirror-like reflections due to the lack of wind. After taking a few sunset shots, I set up the tripod and waited for the Aurora. I didn't have to wait long as it showed up just before 10 p.m. and then went absolutely crazy at 3 a.m. Here are a few of my shots and a time-lapse from that amazing night. <laughs> 